to create a new application object, we would just like anything else, create a new a class. So let me just sort of change this to. So we would create a new class, right? And we would call the new class um, Yamba Yamba app, for example, to, to to keep it short for Yamba application. Yeah, finish. So this is now going to be our application object. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to extend application. That's it. You don't actually need to implement anything if you don't want to. Um, what I typically do always, that's just me, I do my static final, static final string tag. Number app. Right. Um, and I'm kind of curious what's available in Yamba, uh, in, in, in the application object itself. So we could, is, you could go look at the documentation or you can just go source override implement methods. And now this shows you, okay, you can do these four things. You can do on configuration changed. Remember like if the screen was rotated or something like that. On create, that sounds pretty standard. On low memory and on terminate. Okay. Now I'm gonna only do on on create uh, that's sort of like our place where we can init something. So if you're going to create a new uh, uh, Twitter object, this may be a good place to do that, right? Uh, on terminate, actually keep in mind it doesn't get called. It only gets called on the emulator. For some reason, it doesn't. it's documented it doesn't get called on any other real device. So I'm not quite sure what the purpose of it is. On create. So we could do something over here, we could do something like define the Twitter. I'll copy paste the code that we had in other places, directly refresh service. So we just moved the Twitter initialization and all that stuff into one centralized place called application or Yamba app. Got it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's available in application. Application is available to everyone. So that's how it works. Now, what do we do when we define a main building block? What's the next step? Uh, it, it, they have access to it via get application. What's that? Manifest. So let's take a look at the manifest file. 
Yeah, you guys are getting this. Yeah. <laughs> Three days later. Well, yeah, it's a lot of repetition, but that's a good thing, right? Repetition gets it. It makes you get it. So, uh, so how do you define the application? I mean, if I go here and I say control space, there isn't an application. Yeah, we already have an application. Yeah. So it's actually, you already have the application object. The application object is the container for all the other main building blocks. So in itself, it's technically not a building block, right? So I can do here, I can go to control space and then Android name. And then I would say dot Yamba. So although we didn't do this before, we always had an application. It's just a, it was the default application object, right? the system application object. Now we have our own application object. So that's, that's that object. Now if I wanted to in the refresh service, not use Twitter here, I can delete it. I can also delete it from here. I can delete all the references to Twitter, except when we need it. Just one second. So what we need to do here is we need to say Yamba app get application Twitter. Yeah, uh, should you make a gather for Twitter? Um, it's a good question. It's a good question. Um, in Android, we break a lot of things that you should do, right? So yes, you should use getters and setters. No, nobody, no, almost nobody uses them in Android, right? There, uh, and it's this whole argument, right? Like Java was all about being a nice object-oriented language with um, encaps proper encapsulation and everything's private and you use getters and setters to gather data, blah, 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 right? And, and so on, right? Um, Android kind of breaks that rule, right? Secondly, we use integers as pointers to a lot of things, right? Like, technically, you know, in Java, this is very unlike Java to be able to de to say, uh, where's my, to be able to say in item get ID and then to go into and figure out which item was clicked. Right? You wouldn't be doing that. You would be doing something like instant soft operator or something like that, right? Or dot equals or something like that, right? So you would be comparing it differently. You would be working with the objects. Here we are working with integers. So the argument is that it's faster. And that's just, yeah, so that's that's how I, I, I you know, I stick, stick with it. But sure, you could, um, if you're not too lazy to, to type all that, you could uh, do this by uh, create, you can do this, like check, um, actually, I don't think you have to do anything. Uh, let's see, I can just do this. Source, <coughs> generate getters and setters, Twitter, public uh, and there's my gather and setter, right? I probably okay. don't want the setter. So in other words, if you're lazy to type, you can use Eclipse to kind of type it for you. So that's, that's my setter, my gather. And then in that case, I could make this private, right? That's, an, that's I guess, a more proper Java way, it's not something that you commonly see in Android done this way, right? So then this guy, as opposed to <laughs> accessing Twitter directly, would say get Twitter. So like I said, it's neither here nor there, it really depends on uh, the style. Yeah, 
this is redundant. The what? If the application object is available, then this is redundant. Right? Um, what do you mean? The Lambda app extends the application, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but still, it's a separate object. It's still a separate object. So every every container component would have to access that separate object and say, "I want I want to get to one of your variables, one of your fields." The the you you get every object gets a reference to application, but the data within the application it still could be private to that application object. Right, but in this case, even if you define it as private, it is still it is you know only the subclass can access from that. No, no, no. no. no when you define it as private, right, right, right. yeah, on, the, only the class, this class right. can access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not protected. It was without the word private, it was the class uh, visibility, uh, package visibility, so everyone in the package could see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this should work like that, right? So, you know, so if it does, great, you guys can then optimize for the other ones. Oops. Uh, So I could go here and I could now say menu refresh. I should be seeing some of that later. Okay, there it is. Cool. Cool. So that's it. So now we have the Tiamba object. Um, what we'll do next is we're going to optimize also uh, our updater service and status activity to use the Yamba object. Because right now we don't. We have their own versions of Twitter.